Here is the fifth and final creation pattern of the Gang of Four. This pattern is called Singleton Pattern and it is a pattern you use when creating objects. Here's a quick summary of what we are trying to accomplish with this pattern. The Singleton Pattern is a good choice when you are trying to accomplish the following. You want to ensure that a class has only one instance. You want to provide global access to that single instance. You want to make use of lazy initialization, also sometimes called just-in-time initialization. OK, let's go through these points one by one. The first two points are key here. You have a class and you want to make sure that there is only a single instance of that class at any given time. Furthermore, you want your entire application to have access to that single instance. A singleton often uses a process called lazy loading. This means that the singleton is instantiated just prior to first use and not when your application starts up. This can be useful when initializing the singleton is an expensive operation and you want to delay it for as long as possible. The singleton pattern offers a number of benefits over straight-up construction of objects using the new keyword. First of all, it guarantees that there will always be only one instance of the singleton and that everyone is sharing that single instance. This makes the singleton act as a global variable that can pass data from one part of your application to another. The big advantage of singletons over regular global variables is that you can later change your mind and allow multiple instances after all. You can even limit the number of instances to any number and use object pooling to share instances between clients. However, the singleton pattern is the most inappropriately used pattern in the world. Singletons are intended to be used when a class must always have exactly one instance. But developers often use singletons in a misguided attempt to replace global variables. A singleton, for all intents and purposes, is a global variable. And the question you must ask yourself is, why on earth do you need a global variable in an object-oriented design? Singletons should only be considered if all three of the following criteria are satisfied. 1. There is not a single class in your entire code base that could be the owner of the singleton instance. 2. You absolutely need lazy initialization. 3. There is no other way to provide global access to the singleton. If any of these criteria cannot be satisfied, then please do not use a singleton. Here is the UML diagram of the singleton pattern. As you can see, it's a really simple pattern with only a single singleton class. The class provides a static property getter called instance that returns the singleton instance. 
the lazy initialization is hidden in the instance property. The first time you access this property, the singleton class will initialize the instance before returning it to you. On any subsequent access, the initialized instance is returned right away. A common use case for singletons is to provide global access to system-wide services like diagnostic logging. I am going to design a very simple logging framework and expose it as a singleton. The three singleton criteria are fulfilled. I cannot identify any part of my code that could own the diagnostic logger. I need lazy initialization to open the log file. And there is no other way to provide logging services to an entire application. I will implement the pattern with the following class. So let's look at the code. So here's my code. And here is the logger class. It's a simple logger with a constructor that opens the log file. There's a public log method to write a string to the log file. And there's a finalizer to close the log file. Note that the constructor of the logger class is protected. So you cannot create instances of the logger class with the new keywords. You have to use the instance property. And speaking of which, here is the instance property. You can see that it is a static property getter that uses a private field to store the single instance. If the instance field is null, the property first instantiates the logger and then returns it. If the field is not null, the property returns the instance right away. Also note that the lazy initialization code is protected with a lock statement. This lock ensures that only a single thread can execute the code at any given time. So this small fragment of code implements thread safe, lazy loading and ensures that the log file is opened only at the last possible moment. And finally, here is the main program method. You can see that I use the static instance property to access the logger. And then I use it to write three lines to the log file. Let me run the program to prove that everything is working. I am compiling the code now. And now I am running the program. OK, so the program has run without errors. The three lines have been written to the log file. So now I will open a file browser and show you the bin slash debug folder where we will find the log file. And here it is. And you can see that the three log lines are there. Everything works. Here is a quick checklist you can use to implement the singleton pattern. First, make sure there is not a single class in your code base that can be the owner of the singleton instance. Second, make sure you need lazy initialization. And third, make sure there is no alternative way to provide global access to the singleton. If these three criteria are provided for, you can proceed. So next, define a singleton class with a protected constructor and put any initialization code there. Then add a singleton field member called instance. 
add a static property getter called instance and implement lazy initialization. Protect the lazy initialization with a lock statement if you will have multiple threads accessing the singleton. And finally, change the calling code to use the instance property to access the singleton. And here are some final comments. Most importantly, please remember that singletons are just glorified global variables. You should seriously ask yourself why you need a global variable in an object-oriented design. Because you're not supposed to actually need them. Code with singletons everywhere is considered to be an anti-pattern. There are a few valid use cases for singletons. For example, to provide global access to system-wide services like diagnostic logging. You also sometimes see developers wrapping web service proxies with singletons to ensure that only a single proxy gets constructed. The benefits of this are debatable, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Other valid use cases for singletons are facades and state objects. And you can also use singletons in combination with the abstract factory, the builder and the prototype design patterns. The advantage of a singleton over a global variable is that you are absolutely sure of the number of instances when you use singletons, namely one. And you can always change your mind later and increase the number of instances. But again, always remember that a singleton is a global variable and think long and hard why you need a global variable in the first place. Okay, so here is a summary of what we have learned. The singleton pattern provides an interface for ensuring that a class has only one instance and it provides global access to that single instance. The pattern provides lazy initialization, which is useful if initializing the singleton is an expensive operation. The advantage of a singleton over a global variable is that you can increase the number of instances later, should that be necessary. Singletons are nothing more than fancy global variables and they should be used very sparingly.